Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to this Ramadan series as sirat al-Mustaqim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us missions that we have to accomplish. The first one we spoke about is to establish justice and fairness and to stand up for that. The second one is to establish mercy, to turn mercy into a policy, a policy that runs the government, the society, the individual, the family. And then Allah asked us to establish excellence, to do that which is good, to do it to the best of our ability, and to do it with a touch of beauty. That is asked of us. And then Allah asked us to have moral excellence, not only excellence in how the buildings look, but excellence in how the behavior and the character of the human being is. Today, we will deal with the fourth mission that Allah has given to us, which is to speak the truth and to tell others about the truth. And after we tell them the truth, we leave it up to them, whatever they want and whatever decision they want to take after that, to embrace the truth or to walk away from it. That's all up to the individual choices of people. My dear brothers and sisters, the truth is that which is real, whether there is an observer or not. And that's why Allah's name is the truth. Before his creation existed, he was real and he was there. And after his creation ceased to exist, he will be real and he is there subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also gave us the truth. What is the truth from a human perspective? Is that which matches actual reality, not perceived reality. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Al-Quran always gives us the bottom line. Sometimes what Allah is telling us to do, to, for the, at the first glance, it doesn't look like it's the truth. But when you look deep in it, and if you have long life experience, you will realize what Allah told you to do was the truth. When we invite people to the truth, Allah Azza wa Jal asks of us, apply the tripod of how to speak about the truth. Number one, call to the path and to the way of your Lord with wisdom, choosing the right words, the right time, the right place, with the right intention. That's what Allah asks of us, to use our hikmah, to be wise, to uh, be aware of the time and the place, of the cultural context, of the uh, you know ethnic context, of the time and place we are in, to speak to the people in a way and in a language that they understand. And then Allah said, الْحَسَنَةِ And use effective words, heartfelt effective words, so that you can touch the hearts of the people. Don't repel the people from the truth by the way you talk about it. Sometimes you are saying something right and correct, but you want people, you make people run away from it just because of the way you talk about it. And the third, Allah subhanahu wa says, وَجَادِلْهُمْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ When you debate with people about a point, debate in the best manner. Because the second you go into jidal, which is argument, the emotions go high. And with a human being, the way Allah created us, when our emotions go high, our intellect goes low. So now, the person in front of you, they see nothing, hear nothing, understand nothing because you went against them and you turned their hatred and made them repel you and resent you. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, even if you want to debate and argue, debate and argue with the best way and best manner. And that's not a sign of weakness, but rather a sign of strength. Imam al-Shafi'i said that never a knowledgeable person debated me, but I beat him. And never an ignorant person debated me, but he beats me. My dear brothers and sisters, I want to put a note here that do you see the goodness in all the Muslims around the world? It all was born from the goodness of the Prophet We learn how to apply justice, fairness, moral excellence, mercy, and preaching in the right way. It's all, it's like a big bang and now we are in the aftermath. If you trace back the goodness in any Muslim, in, in this world you will trace it back 
to the person of the Prophet ﷺ. His sunnah was not only what he said, what he did, what he approved, but actually his state of being, his hal وسلم, And his hal was to be thankful and patient and to keep his eyes on the goal and not to let the instant reality discourage him from continuing on pursuing the goal and the mission. And that's why I say in this blessed month of Ramadan, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon his beloved Prophet وسلم, who lived all of these teachings and who's anyone in the Muslim world that is trying to apply some of these teachings is only at a small reflection of him. Even if we put all the Muslims at all the times together, we can still not match the Prophet وسلم, we thank Allah for sending us such a beautiful human being to be a role model that is relevant, especially for today's reality. May Allah have his peace on him and may Allah send his peace and blessings upon us. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen.